If you ever played Super Double Dragon on the Super Nintendo, you might be aware of the Japanese version that went by the name of Return of Double Dragon. A lot of websites are saying the American version was rushed through production to meet its release date. The Japanese version of the game would be released afterwards and so it was revised in a few ways, but it also suffered from a similar fate. Some content that was planned for the game was never fully complete when the game was released. The main villain of the game is Duke, a tall, muscular warrior who practices martial arts. But there's nothing mentioned about him in the game. When Super Double Dragon was released, many ideas from the game were left out, including the story. As you start the game, there is no introduction to anything, you're just thrown into stage 1 right away, without knowing what the story is. In today's video, I'm going to dive into the hidden story of Super Double Dragon on the Super Nintendo, which is also known as Return of Double Dragon on the Super Famicom in Japan, and the story behind the final boss, Duke, which seemed to have no story in the game, but in fact he did. It just wasn't in the game. The manual for the American version did give us a bit of information though. It also brings back Marion, but in a different role. Marion, a beautiful policewoman, is a student of Kung Fu and part-time assistant instructor at the Martial Arts Training School, run by Billy and Jimmy Lee. A narcotics investigator, she has disappeared while attempting to infiltrate the ruthless criminal mob known as the Black Shadow Warriors. It will take all of your incomparable fighting skill and knowledge to find and rescue Marion, alone or with the help of your brother. You must face the fearsome onslaught of the Shadow Warriors with the fabled power and ferocity of the Double Dragon. Apparently, there was a sprite of Marion in her uniform that was programmed into the ROM, but it was never shown. It might still be locked within the game's code. You'll also notice the enemy group is named in two different ways for some reason. There's Black Shadow Warriors, and then Shadow Warriors, and I'm not sure why. Marion's policewoman idea was something that was used in the TV series, and then planned for the game's story. On the Super Famicom manual, which is just the Japanese version, Marion is mentioned again. She's a drug investigator for the police station. She's been looking into the Shadow Warriors recently, and that's when she suddenly went missing one day. And since then, she has not returned. I found some concept artwork created by Koji Ogata. This depicted the time Marion went missing in the story. You'll notice the enemies here are Maguire, Carlum, Williams, and Roper. In the Japanese version of the game's box art, you can see Duke in the back. He has long blonde hair and a thin mustache. But within the game, his hair is tied up in a ponytail and he's missing that red outfit. Muneki Ebenuma had worked on a few Double Dragon titles. And in 2004, he published a commentary about his involvement with this game. He was a planner for Return of Double Dragon. Out of all the projects he worked on, this one stood out the most mainly because of the setbacks the game went through during production. He said this, There were text and images that were being made for cutscenes that were inserted into the game's ROM, but ended up being unused. The ending and sibling confrontation were even programmed into the game, but I was forced to patch it out due to fears that it would end up bugging the game. We were given priority to meet the announced release date given by the company. Here is the text that was going to be used in the game, but it was cut out. There were also character portraits taken out from the game. These would occur during small cutscenes, similar to how it was done in Double Dragon 2 on NES. The American version of the game's manual has a small piece of info about Duke. It just says he's the dictator. He owns several martial arts gyms, but most of them were taken by force. His background is a mystery. The final mission description says this, Here, you will face your final challenge. You will need to use a barrage of fighting techniques to battle your way through to Duke and rescue Marion. Some burning animations were also cut from the game, which occurred when players or enemies were killed by a firebomb. Sure, this was a small thing, but it just added that extra touch if you got to see that cool animation, along with a fire layer that would be part of the final stage with the statues. There was an extra character that never made it to the final version of the game. He was named Steiner and he used a Beretta pistol. 
another piece of concept art was just an idea for the game over screen. Muneki Ebenuma also released some details about what else was taken out of the game's story. The final boss, Duke, along with his brother, were supposed to be part of another pair of Double Dragon twins. Both of them were planned to be masters of the Susetsuken fighting style. Both of them would have been enemies in the final draft. Duke and his brother were former training partners of the Lee brothers. Duke's connection to the Lee brothers would have been explained within the cutscenes that were planned for the game's story. That's how we would find out the Lee brothers had already met Duke a long time ago. At the end of stage 6, they wanted to expand it a bit further. The bridge you see here was going to break and you fell into a river below. Then behind a waterfall, you would find a steel door. That was the secret entrance to the enemy's hideout. As time passed by during production, major cuts were put in place and Duke's brother was never shown. So Duke was placed as the final boss with no real introduction other than what was said in the American version of the game's manual. Duke's fighting style was then changed to have his own techniques. So he was no longer linked to the Lee brothers in terms of martial arts or as a past friend. He just became a random boss at the end of the game with no story. There was even another battle planned after you defeated Duke. Flames would engulf some parts of the stage and prepare you for one final boss. The shadow of Duke would be the final boss in the story. This was the dark power or dark intentions that Duke had almost fully succumbed to. It was similar to the double illusion boss from Double Dragon 2. You know, the clones that were different colors of Billy and Jimmy, but with extra powers. Duke's shadow would proceed to taunt the Lee brothers while reminding them of their past. Keep in mind, these are auto translations in a browser, so it might not be 100% accurate. So here's what it possibly says. If you defeat the shadow, then Duke's life will also end. But are you willing to kill your friend with your own fist? If you don't defeat the shadow, then Duke will repeat his mistakes. There was even an actual ending planned for the game, and while the translations appear to not be so accurate, you do get the idea of what is being said here. Duke's evil shadow disappears in a sea of fire and dies. Then Duke's soul speaks out to Billy and the others. He wasn't able to control himself, but wanted to thank them for stopping him before he fell completely into darkness. He will never forget the memories they had together. His final words are this, Thank you, Billy and Jimmy. Goodbye. With a peaceful face, Duke takes his last breath and dies. At the gravestone of Duke, we would see Billy pay his respects in a martial arts way, as tears fall down his face. The end. Back in 2018, they released the Japanese version of the game in a special red cartridge. It also shipped with a manual that showed the date of the game's story. It took place around the year 199X. Some more details in the story were included. If they wanted to see Marion again, the Lee brothers would have to give up their dojo and join them as disciples of the Duke Dojo. I was not able to track down the original game manual for Return of Double Dragon from the 90s to see if there was anything really different from the American version, but online sources have said there was a portrait of Duke inside. The two versions played the same, but the changes within Return of Double Dragon were better additions to the game. You could select the difficulty and number of lives in the Japanese version, but not in the American version. The enemy's slide attack of Super Double Dragon was just their jump kick sprites, but they slid across the floor. In Return of Double Dragon, the slide attack was taken from their low attack, just animated forward. Yeah, it's a small change, but the updated slide attack in this version just looked better. This combo I used in the Japanese version would defeat most enemies. Two spinning back fists, three knee attacks, and a throw. Of course, in later levels, enemies would get more health. But the same combo done on Super Double Dragon would not be enough to defeat most enemies. And that's because enemies had more health in Super Double Dragon. More than what they had in Return of Double Dragon on hard difficulty. This resulted in battles going on longer than they should. When you respawned after death in Super Double Dragon, you can be hit right away. Giving you little chance to plan a strategy or react quick enough if enemies are nearby. But 
in Return of Double Dragon, you would have around 7 seconds of invincible frames, giving you plenty of time to move away from danger and plan a new attack. If you already carried a weapon but wanted to switch, this feature was not available in Super Double Dragon, you would feel stuck with the weapon until you got hit to drop it or the area was completed. But in Return of Double Dragon, you could switch weapons anytime you wanted, just stand over the weapon and switch back and forth. You were not able to catch the boomerang in Super Double Dragon, it would hit you on the way back, so you had to be careful when it returned, but you could still hit it out of the air then pick it up. This just had tricky timing and not so useful when you're surrounded by enemies. In Return of Double Dragon, you would automatically grab the boomerang out of midair as it returned to you, giving you a much more enjoyable experience when using this weapon. Weapon damage from knives and explosives was very high in Super Double Dragon. Very dangerous if you got hit by these two weapons, but they were also more useful on enemies at the same time. The damage of these weapons was reduced in Return of Double Dragon, making them less dangerous, but still fun to use when you had a chance. If you charge up your super meter by holding L or R button, when it reaches at least halfway, pushing an attack button would unleash a forward spinning hurricane kick. The spin kick would only hit once and cause a knockdown in Super Double Dragon, but in the Japanese version of the game, it would hit multiple times doing even more damage, which made it very useful to use on enemies. In Return of Double Dragon, enemies were given the ability to crouch your attacks. This made them a bit more tricky to finish them off in combos. It was not a huge layer of difficulty, but it just gave them more options. This was not seen in Super Double Dragon. Some stages had enemies shifted around. In Super Double Dragon, these mid-bosses would appear alone with some other enemies, but in Return of Double Dragon, they appeared together, and music for the stages was also swapped around in Return of Double Dragon. Now, in Super Double Dragon, Stage 6 of the bridge would have the whole area pushed away off the screen, while in Return of Double Dragon, you could still keep that edge on screen and use it to your advantage. Now let's talk about throwing knives in Super Double Dragon. The timing was very strict, but all you had to do was attack it right before it hits you and the knife falls down. This was changed in Return of Double Dragon. If you hit a thrown knife as it's about to hit you, it will reflect back to where it was thrown. A pretty cool change, but you could also go back and forth if you wanted to. The final stage between the two versions is different. Here's how it looks in Super Double Dragon. This is where you fight Duke in the end of this version, but in Return of Double Dragon, you would only fight a few enemies with some bosses. Another section was added in the Japanese version. This just made the game last a little bit longer. The final stage with Duke would look like this. It has a carving on the wall in the back, spikes on the side wall, which do not do any damage if you touch them for some reason, and a floor pattern of green and red. In Super Double Dragon, there is a small ending, kind of, but it's only a short amount of text. I know it's not much for an ending, but at least it's something, and it's quite the opposite for Return of Double Dragon. Since they had more time to make more changes to this version, you would expect an ending, right? Well, for some reason, there's nothing after you beat Duke. It goes straight to the credits. A Double Dragon fighting game showed up in arcades and on the Neo Geo console. There were two boss characters in the game, and one of them was named Duke, but his design was changed and did not reflect the version we had on Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. He only shared a similar orange color on his outfit, but his body type, face, hair, and fighting style were now different. Muneki Ebenuma would return to the Double Dragon franchise to work on Double Dragon Advance. He agreed to work on this project to make up for his disappointment with the unfinished version of Return of Double Dragon a long time ago, but to also bring back the old charm of the first four Double Dragon games. There were several requests to insert special moves similar to Street Fighter 2 or a system that would resemble Final Fight in a way, but Muneki defended his decision to stick to the game's roots, and what we got in Double Dragon Advance was a true successor to the other games. Alright, so that covers the hidden story of Duke and Super Double Dragon, and the changes that went into Return of Double Dragon, along with other content that never made it into the game for us to experience. 
If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it. This really is another case when a game was rushed for a release date and a lot of gameplay elements were left out and those things would have made the game better. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. This is Carlos or Acid Glow and I'll see you next time.